As Trump officials meet with their North Korean counterparts over the future of that country's nuclear weapons program, others gathered this week to remember the devastation caused by the first nuclear bomb ever deployed, which the U.S. dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima more than 70 years ago. Many don't know that several American prisoners of war were among those killed, and as Adam Riley shows us, a Japanese man who dedicated his life to finding those American families is spending time with them in the U.S. in his first ever visit to this country. Thank you. Thank you. This event at Lowell's Centerville Memorial Park was a hybrid, part Memorial Day service and part tribute to this man, Shigeaki Mori, whose story is as inspiring as it is counterintuitive. Mori was a child when the U.S. bombed his hometown of Hiroshima, Japan, killing roughly 140,000 people. As an adult, he spent years recreating the days before and just after the bombing, not from the perspective of his own countrymen, but of the 12 American prisoners of war who were killed by the blast. And as he learned more details, he shared them with the POW's families. When I went to Japan, I, he brought me everywhere. He showed me exactly where Norman was buried. I cried for 10 days. It was the most emotional thing. Susan Brissett Archinsky is the niece of Norman Brissett of Lowell, who survived the initial blast but died 13 days later. Her visit to Hiroshima plays a big role in the documentary Paper Lanterns, which tells the story of Mori and the men he's worked to commemorate. <laughs> Now it's Mori who's visiting the U.S. In Lowell, he helped unveil a plaque naming the 12 POWs, received the key to the city, and paid his respects at Norman Brissett's grave. He also reconnected with Ralph Neal, a Tennessee man who met with Mori in Japan, to learn about his uncle's last days. I am a Christian pastor, and uh, as, as the Bible teaches, agape love, an unconditional love, and I, I have never seen anyone exhibit that more than him. Tomorrow, Maury attends a paper lantern screening at the MFA, then heads to New York for an appearance at the UN. The film's director, Barry Frechette, says in an age when the nuclear threat is resurgent, Maury's message is especially resonant. You've got to remember now that even talking to veterans, that that that, meant, that that weapon might have brought the end of the war, but they all agree it can't be used again. Uh, and I think we're nonchalant in how we discuss it now. But however compelling that message is, it's hard not to wonder why this lifelong obsession with 12 men from another country that brought massive destruction onto his own. On Monday afternoon, at a cookout at Frechette's home in Billerica, I asked him, why did you originally decide to spend so much time and energy looking into the lives of 12 Americans when so many more Japanese men and women died in Hiroshima. So I can give them a feeling, I can give them a report, and then I can give them a closure. If I didn't do it, nobody knew what had happened. Since Mori shared an embrace with President Obama when he visited Hiroshima, I also had to ask about President Trump, who's been almost flippant when discussing nuclear war. In response, Mori spoke approvingly of Trump's recent statement canceling a summit with North Korea. I was a little bit concerned. However, more and more I learned how what he said in that statement. I felt much better. I strongly hope that uh, there is no nuclear war at all. That optimism caught me by surprise. But maybe it shouldn't have, because almost everything about Shigeaki Mori is unexpected. Adam Riley, WGBH News. As Adam mentioned, before Mr. Mori heads off to the U.N., he and some of the families he's connected with here in the U.S. will be appearing at a special screening of the film Paper Lanterns tomorrow night at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, where they'll all take part in a discussion afterward. For more information on that, visit MFA.org.